from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for our message is our first reading from Acts, and I'll read just a portion of that one more time. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out from among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. This is our text. Please pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, we ask, by the power of your Holy Spirit, open our minds, open our hearts, open our souls, and fill us with your word. Sanctify us with that word and help us to recognize that each and every one of us here gathered and each and every one of us hearing your word at this moment is being called by you, called by you to serve, called by you to step up, called by you to be a witness, called by you to serve. Strengthen us in our faith and by your word that we would hear that call and respond to it. Respond to your call for us to be a witness. Respond to your call to us to serve you in your kingdom. In your name, amen. You may be seated. I'm going to talk about replacements, and you're going to wonder, why is he carrying that mic? Well, for whatever reason, the mic that I'm wearing isn't working, so I needed a... So, uh, it, this kind of goes along with us, and I want you to think about everything in your home, everything that you use maybe on a daily basis, that at some point, you're going to have to replace. So, start thinking about... What kind of things do you have to replace? Appliances. Appliances. Find the picture. Battery. Refrigerator. Okay. Next. Who said something else? Dish soap. Cars. Light bulb. Wait, we gotta wait for the picture of the light bulb. There we go. Computer. How about on your vehicle? Oil. Tires. Gas. Gas. Everyday use. You know, I, I hate this. I'm, I'm in the process of, of maybe writing out a check or something, and the pen dies. So you've got to quick find a replacement, hopefully in the same color ink that you were using. So uh, I want you to think about all of those things. And, you know, sometimes there's warning. Sometimes there is no warning. Sometimes we know it's going to happen. Sometimes we don't know it's going to happen. And so sometimes that replacement has to come faster. Sometimes we can prepare for it. But a lot of times uh, we're never fully and completely ready. Uh, now, as we're thinking about this, Take the pen off the screen. I want you to think about members of this congregation who have, over the last three, five, maybe longer years, have gone to be with their Lord. Okay? Picture them in your mind. Picture them in your heart. Can they be replaced? Okay. Okay. But did they serve in this church? Yes. So does the work still need to be done? Yes. So therefore, do they need to be replaced? Yes. In that sense. We can't replace who they were. We can't replace their personalities. We can't replace everything that they meant to us. But God's work still needs to be done. And that's the point. And so as we listen to this passage of Scripture, that's what we need to take away from it. So as we listen, we see, um, jumping back to verse 21, Wes, if you want to pick up there. And I want you to hear the message that we're getting from Peter at that point. So uh, jump down maybe verse 19 or so. Um, 
No, not that far. Verse 20. So Peter recognizes from the scriptures, and he quotes it, quotes it to this whole group of disciples. And we remember from the scripture reading, at this point, we're not just talking about the 11. Because we remember from the list that it was much more than that, right? It wasn't only the 11 disciples, it was others, quite a few others. The women, of course, who witnessed the resurrection, Mary, Jesus' mother, all of his brothers, who at one point thought he was crazy and wanted to take him away, and in addition to that, quite a few more witnesses. So we're talking not a group of 11, Scripture says a group of 120. So this is getting to be a, a much bigger group. And as they recognize this, Peter wants them to hear the reason that this action must be taken. And so he quotes from Psalms. First part, may his camp become desolate and let there be no one to dwell in it. And then again, let another take his office. So they recognize what? This office needs to be filled. This office needs a replacement. But one of the things I want you to note in this is what didn't he say? What didn't he say about Judas? Because what he could have said about Judas was what? You no good piece of, right? But he didn't. He didn't disparage him. He didn't talk you know, in, in a derogatory way about Judas. He talked about him tactfully. He talked about him and said, yeah, he went to his own place, but he didn't say where that place was. He just said, this office needs to be, have a replacement. This office needs to be filled again. And then they put up some criteria. And those criteria in verse 21. So one of the men who have accompanied us during the, all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. So you're thinking about that whole three-year time period of Jesus' ministry. We're not talking about all the baptism time of John. We're talking about when Jesus was baptized by John. So that signals the beginning of his public ministry. And with the beginning of his public ministry, that carries on, and that carries on until, of course, Jesus ascended into heaven. So they wanted someone who was a witness of everything, who was there hearing, seeing, and experiencing everything they were experiencing and that would be the one. And so they could only come up with two candidates. And the two candidates, of course, were Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was also called Justice. And maybe the choice was made by God because he had too many names. <laughs> and the other one was Matthias. So how do they fill it? Yeah. Cast lots. They don't go into depth about their character. They don't, you know, pull out their all their information in their file and start going through uh, them, them one by one. They put it in God's hands. And as they put it in God's hands, that's all it was. Casting lots. Now, does that mean dice? Does that mean they wrote their name on a, a piece of parchment and threw it in a hat and somebody, you know, drew one out? Really doesn't matter. What matters was the prayer. The prayer was basically, God, you know which one you want. Help us choose it. Help us choose. Now, here's what I want you to think about. We know the things that have to go on here at church. We know the things that need to take place. We know the things that God wants us to do and that are beneficial for the congregation. Now, when someone passes away, 
or leaves the congregation or moves uh, out of the area or, or whatever reason they're not in the congregation any longer. How do you pick a replacement? How do you choose? You say, well, you know, you've got to go through qualified applicants and you've got to, you know, no, 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 and you know, uh uh. How do you choose? Pray about it? Yeah. Pray about it. Yeah, pray about it. And then look for people who are willing. And I really want us to dwell on this because I want you to think back to those people that you pictured in your mind earlier. What did they do? Why were they valuable? Why were they important? What did they mean to us? What did they mean more importantly to the congregation and to God himself? See, God took care of their eternal needs. God took care of their spiritual needs. God took care of their everlasting needs. But he still has things to do here on earth. It says that we need to have one of these become with us a witness to his resurrection. We need people in our congregation who are willing to step up and take on roles. I don't want to speak in a way that disparages anybody that has left or anybody that has passed on. But for those of you who have been longtime members of the congregation, there are two people that sat at those doors every week. You probably got a giant hug and maybe even a kiss on the cheek, right? I want you to look as you go in and out. Who's sitting there now? Who's sitting there now? Is this a problem? Big time. We love those folks. We love seeing them. We love getting those hugs. We love getting that kiss on the cheek. But who's doing it now? And that's just one example. Just one example. I want us to think in those terms. It doesn't mean you have to do what they did the way they did it, but it still needs to be done. It doesn't mean you knew, need to be the new, right? It means you need to be who you are, who God created you to be, who God called you to be, who God wants you to be, and be willing to step up. He said, well, I couldn't possibly. Hmm, really? <laughs> the thing is, a lot of us don't realize what we're capable of until we're willing to take that step. We're willing to take that chance. We're willing to put ourselves out there. And I'm not saying that everyone has to be a greeter. And if that's all you're getting from this, you're missing the point. What I am saying is, there's lots of things that need to be done. And when people leave or people move on or people leave that office or whatever the case is, that still needs to be done. We need replacements. Uh, and I want us to think about the greatest replacement of all. Look at the cross. What does that mean to you? Did you need a savior? Could you do it yourself? And the problem is not one of us could. Not one of us. Because what was required of this office was what? Perfection. Perfect life without sin. Perfect righteousness in every way. Perfection that would be willing 
to die. Perfection that would be enough to cover the sins of all mankind. Perfection that would be so valuable, but yet so powerful that not only could it take the place of all sin and all sinners, but had the power to overcome sin and death and the power of the devil and give life to all mankind. There was only one. We saw with Matthias, there were at least two choices, but in our case, there's only one. Only Jesus could do for us the work of our salvation. Only Jesus could. God sent him as true man who lived without sin so that in that perfection he could come and be our replacement. Our replacement as far as taking our sin upon himself. Our replacement as going to the cross, serving punishment in our place to take that sin away. Our replacement to die. Our replacement to overcome that death and to rise again and give us new life. Only Jesus could do that. So Jesus was the ultimate replacement. The ultimate replacement for everything. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. See, that victory is our victory only because Jesus was our replacement. Only because Jesus was our replacement. And because only Jesus could step in and be our replacement, he calls on us to come and serve. He calls on us to step up. He calls on us to do the things that need to be done. There's a lot of people in our world who don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. True or false? And that number is growing. With passes, with each generation that leaves this earth, there are less to step up and replace. Why? Because there's less believers in the group but to come behind. You know, I, I use you know the numbers from the Gallup poll a few weeks ago. Less than fifty percent of the United States is a member of a church. Less than 50%. So that number is diminishing. How do we get replacements? How? To take people who don't believe and witness. Wes, could you bring up the Bible verse, please? Romans chapter 10, verses 14 to 17. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless someone is, unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? Read verse 17 with me. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Now every voice who repeated that verse is capable of what? Witnessing. Because you are capable of speaking. I don't feel worthy. I don't feel able. I don't feel... Ugh. There's lots of things I don't feel. But the Lord's called on me. And that's what he says to you too. He's calling on you. He's not sending you over to Africa or South America or Australia or Antarctica. Where is he sending you? To your neighborhood, 
to your circle of friends, your circle of family, your circle of influence. That's where he's calling you. He doesn't need you to go to faraway places because the people who don't believe are where? Right here. Right next door. And so, starting right at the top, how then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? The message needs to be out there. And so, I ask you, are you a replacement? When's the last time you looked at a picture of one of your parents? When's the last time you looked at a picture of someone who came before you? When's the last time you thought about the things that they did? And when's the last time you thought about God has need of me? He has need of each and every one of us. He was our replacement. Let us be his witnesses. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Spirit be abide with us all. Amen.